Genesis. Show my hardcore is. Thanks for checking out today's video. Today we're actually going to cover part two of our uh, breathing uh, technique and breathing <clears throat> hacks to allow you to make sure that you're getting the most oxygen and uh, the best, uh, the most efficient type of breathing during workouts and also after workouts so, uh, so you recover maximally. Uh, if you missed part one, uh, we covered a lot of the, uh, the basic breathing techniques, the different breathing phases to teach you guys how to uh, what's called belly breathe efficiently and give you some drills to do just during the day when you're not working out to make sure that that becomes effortlessly uh, effortless that that becomes effort, effortless and allows you to carry that over into your workout so you're able to consume as much oxygen as needed uh, with as little as, of effort as possible. Uh, if you didn't see that video, there's a link below. Click on that, watch that one first, and then uh, come back to this one. And today we're going to talk some more about some, uh, some basic breathing ladders that allow you not only to um, really get a good, solid uh, muscular endurance and a cardiovascular type workout in, but it also forces you to, do, uh, to use the, the type of breathing and belly breathing techniques efficiently um, during a workout, even whenever you're fatigued and you're panicked, or not panicked, but even when you're fatigued and stressed and, and out of breath to make sure that you're allowing yourself maximal recovery time uh, or rest periods in between sets. Breathing ladders are not to be done uh, basically as fast as possible or to be timed. They are to go either to a set goal number or to basically go until you can't finish the next rung of the ladder. What a uh, breathing ladder is, is, is you can take basically any exercise. I've put uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, my favorite seven that, that I do that seem to work really well, um, really well in terms of getting a longer workout or really well in terms of really forcing me to focus on my breathing and turning um, really miserable really quickly. Um, the, uh, the basic, the seven exercises that I recommend, uh, one arm kettlebell swing, Two arm kettlebell swing, one arm, one arm kettlebell snatch, one arm kettlebell jerk, double kettlebell jerk, barbell thruster, and barbell front squats. So first learned about this back, uh, I guess, two about two years ago. Didn't really pay much attention to it whenever I uh, um, spent a lot of time on the Jim Jones and Mark Twight forum. And because I just said that name, you um, you know, if you're a big CrossFit Kool-Aid guy, you are probably going to turn this video off, but that's fine. Um, anyway, studying some of Mark Twight's stuff and uh, you know their type of training philosophies and methodologies, they did a ton of uh, breathing ladders of all different types of movements. Breathing ladders become where you <clears throat> perform one rep of the exercise, set the, the, the kettlebell or the barbell down or rack it, and perform one good controlled quality breath like we talked about, uh, belly breath like we talked about in the, first, uh, in the first part. You'll perform two reps of that exercise, set it down, You'll do two controlled uh, belly breaths, so on and so forth. Three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until either you hit your set goal of the amount of reps you want to do, or you hit your uh, a stage where, like, say, you get to 15, and, and by the time you get through 15 breaths, you know, you can't complete that 16th rep because you just haven't recovered enough, uh, haven't rested enough. It just teaches you to slow that down and so the workout's done. Either way you want to do that, they're both great ways um, to try it out. So, you know, while you're giving this a go, try out both ways, see which one you really like. I like going for set goals starting off. Once I get kind of a, a set goal or a baseline, then I kind of tweak and see if I can push myself past those numbers, uh, how far past or if I can increase the weight um, and really focus on breathing and maximizing my air. Uh, one thing that a lot of people seem to be confused on with uh, breathing ladders is you are still going to breathe during the movement. It's not hold your breath for one rep, then one breath, breathe, uh, one breath to recover, hold your breath for two reps. It's not that. It's two normal breaths that you would take during a movement. So for a kettlebell swing, out, you know, out at the down, in, out, in, set it down, two breaths. What this is what all these numbers are basically what I've learned uh, works in terms of a, a quality work to rest ratio and it really kind of depends on what exercise you're doing it also depends on what weight you're doing but that's going to vary for everyone depending on their strength levels and conditioning levels and uh, but this seems to really be solid 
a, a good starting point and really quality way to judge and know exactly how to maximize um, or get the most out of your breathing ladder. So, uh, for example, one arm kettlebell swing is a one 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 ratio. So what that means is basically you're gonna do one swing, come up, switch, another swing, set it down, one breath. So one one arm swing, one other arm swing, one breath. Then it would be two, two, two. So it basically it's a one, one, one ratio. If you do for every one you do in your right arm, you can do one on your left arm, you're gonna do one breath. Uh, two arm kettlebell swings because the time is going to uh, be shortened <clears throat> between swings, it's not gonna be here, transition here, here. You're gonna go a two to one ratio. So it'd be two hit, you know, two swings, one breath, four swings, two breaths, three swings, or six swings, three breaths, eight swings, four breaths, so on and so on, until you get to where you can't really, you know, you hit that number or you can't get the, the recover quick enough to complete that next run. One arm kettlebell snatch is going to be uh, probably by far the hardest uh, kettlebell movement in terms of just pure movement. Um, we're still being able to recover. Same rule applies as the one arm kettlebell swing. One, 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 one right arm, one left arm, one breath, two right arm, two left arm, two breaths. One arm kettlebell jerk is going to be the same. One, one, one. You'll stay in the rack position the entire time. This is what makes it really more miserable compared to the other two. It really forces you to belly breathe because you have here trying to push that, compressing that chest so you can't get that panic breathing compared to breathing the belly. Um, that, but it's going to be one. You'll go down, you'll swing it. Two, breast, or one breath, I'm sorry. One, one, one breath. <clears throat> You'll transfer down. Two, two, swing it, transfer, clean it up. Two, two, rack it, two breaths. So on and so forth. Double kettlebell jerk, this is when it gets really bad because the weight gets so heavy that it's really compressing the lungs, not allowing you to take in the air you need. Um, you're gonna stay in that rack position. One, boom, back down, one breath. Two, boom, pop, back down, two breaths. So on and so forth. This one gets really hard and really forces you to use the most out of the air you can get in just because it's pulling you down and you're not going to be able to pull in the maximal air each breath. Um, barbell thrusters, everything you're gonna do with a thruster always sucks. It's gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. Thrusters get tiring if you don't have a place to rack it. I don't want a, a clean thruster. And same thing with the, uh, the front squats in the next one. <clears throat> don't want to clean, you know, a squat clean or uh, have to clean every, the start of every set. So if you don't have a, a place to rack a bar, then just stick with the kettlebell uh, movements. But thruster is going to be one to one ratio as well. You can go really as heavy as you want on a thruster, but you want to get pretty deep into the, the, into the, the ladder. And so typically 95, uh, anywhere from 65 to 95, uh, you know, 45 to 95, it doesn't matter. Same rule applies with the front squats, 45 to 95 pound max just because you're not gonna be getting any air if you're front squatting correctly uh, once you get in those deeper reps because it should be the quality front rack up in that throat and so it's gonna be even harder to take that air in. Um, <clears throat> so both of those basically one, rack it, one breath, unrack it, two, rack it, two breaths. It's a little more difficult to do compared to the kettlebells. They're definitely way more devastating and deadly and, and, and uh, vomit inducing feeling the panic breathing can't get that air and so it's really these are going to be your shorter variations just because they're so miserable compared to the longer ones <clears throat> typically barbell thrusters i'm in the eights uh sometimes the tens depending on what <clears throat> what weight i'm doing uh kettlebell swings snatches 12s 15s i can go 20 20 plus it's not that big of a deal um it's more working on getting the weight going now so give these things a, a, a go. Because the weights are light, because it's not intense, because you're forced to have rest, it's forcing you to maximize your recovery and rest in between sets. You can do these as a light second workout on the day. 
These can be a recovery workout. Anything like that, you can make them at the, you can do them at the end of your normal strength training workout, <clears throat> just to uh, to make sure that you you know can even start doing these kind of in a fatigue state if you're already tired from that strength workout. Um, really, these can be thrown in anytime, especially if uh, you know if you plan on going for a longer. Ah, sorry, mosquito. Anyway, got it. There's a uh, you know especially if you plan on going for a longer period of time. So give these a go. If you uh, have any questions about breathing ladders, be sure to comment below. Part one, like I said, is down there. If you haven't, subscribe to all our videos. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Now you guys know, and knowing is half the battle. Genesis. Show my hardcore is, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yo.